Hi, this is an overview of data sets in Spider Impact. Data sets is the business intelligence layer that underlies all the performance management functionality. Today we're going to cover exploring your data in the data set section. We're going to talk about creating new data sets and then linking them to existing data sets. We're going to talk about showing off your data set data in sections like charts and reports and dashboards. We're going to talk about creating KPIs so that you can use the data set data to power your strategic plan. And we're going to talk about permissions and what makes them so powerful in Spider Impact. So let's jump right into the software. This is the data set section. Data sets, just like everything else in the software, are stored by organization. Uh, here we're at the Mobile World Incorporated example. And we have a device sales data set that we don't know anything about it. Let's go to the records tab real quick just to see what we're talking about here. There's 29,000 records for our device sales, and we have a customer ID, uh, we have a sales date, a sale price, a sales department, and a sales employee. And that's for you know 29,000 records. These are 29,000 sales that our company has made over time. All right, great. So let's click back to the Explore tab and let's start digging into this data. Everything in data sets revolves around this choose a field box. You click on it and you can see these are the fields that I can uh, choose to explore. I'm going to choose sale employee and it's going to break down all of my sales by employee. You can see here Isaac Bernhardt is in the lead with 5,700 sales. Uh, representing just under 20% of the company's sales over time, right? Odell is second in play, second in line here, followed by Holly in third. Uh, if I want to see data on another field, I just click on it and I choose sale date. And this says that May 2021 was my best sales month ever, followed by July of 2021. If I want to filter on anything, I can just click it and I can see July 2021 data. It's going to apply this filter up here as well as down here. This is the global filter box that says here's all the filters that are applied. And there's, you know, you can see the file, the filters applied to sale date. And it reduces the number of sales to 726. And you can see that in July, the leaderboard shifted a little bit. Isaac's still in first, but Holly is in second place. Uh, same kind of thing if I would just want to see Odell's uh, sales numbers, you click on that, and here's, you know, his best sales month was June 2021, followed by May of 2021. And that right there is like 90% of the uh, stuff you're going to do on the Datasets Explorer tab. You're going to choose a field from the drop-down box, uh, you know, sales department. You're going to look at that. Uh, you're going to filter on it by clicking on things. You know, I see here that retail is 98% of my sales. Corporate's 2%. Well, let's look at corporate, filter on that. Okay, there's only two people who have ever sold a corporate deal. It's Kim and Russell. And here's, you know, our corporate sales over time, right? That is the vast majority of the work you're gonna do on the Datasets Explorer tab. But this wouldn't be a very good video if we stopped right there. Uh, datasets can do so much more, so let's dig a little further. We're gonna go over here to number of sales and click on that global box here where it says change total display. And we care about the number of sales, obviously, but what we really care about is how much money of sales are we talking about here, right? So we're gonna switch to doing a custom field and we're gonna say sale price. And you can do sum or average, you know, all these different aggregation types. We're going to do the total sales amount. And this tells a very different story now. We're talking $29 million worth of sales. Uh, Kim Lavender shoots the top, followed by Russell with, you know, $6 million and $5 million in sales, respectively. We also see that uh, July 2021 is our best month, but the second best month is March of 2020. So judged by dollars, which is probably a better judge for your sales, uh, it tells a completely different story. Down here in sales department, uh, retail is pulling in 61% of our business and corporate is 39%. So that right there, uh, by switching to dollars rather than number of sales, it tells a very, very different story. Uh, you can choose you know, to just add some fields and change you know, everything all at once. But if I want to answer some questions, I can also edit uh, individual tables. Like, you know, what's the story behind this sales department? Why is retail 98% of the number of sales, but 61% of the dollars. Something's going on with average sale price, right? So we can choose, go to options and choose columns. And I'm gonna add a new column where I take sales price, but I just switch to the average. And I can see here at retail, $617 of my average retail sale. And the average corporate sale was 17,000. And that tells a, a pretty compelling story. Uh, you can also break down uh, by row or column here. So here's sale date. Let's say I want to see our corporate 
and our retail sales for every single date over time. Well, I've got my sale date already. I can choose options, repeat rows by, uh, and we're gonna choose by sales department. And here we go, July of 2021, here's my corporate and retail sales and percentages, you know, for every single month. And that's the general idea of the data set explorer tab. You know, you can add tables, you can choose what kind of data you want to do, uh, want to display, you can add filters. Uh, if I want to save this view for later, I just click on save. Um, give it a name. And then now, you know, I'm, uh, when someone goes to this data set, they're going to start with a blank slate like everybody else. But you can also click down to my test view and just get a starting spot where you, you can start slicing and dicing your data and, you know, see what's going on behind the scenes. All right, so now that we know about data sets, let's talk about how to build them. If you remember, the device sales data set had a column called customer ID that said, you know, which customer does the sale apply to? Well, I've got a spreadsheet here showing uh, details on every single customer we've got. There's a unique customer ID column. There's a point of contact, first name, last name, phone number, and email. There's a company field that's blank most of the time, but there's some companies in there. There's an address, a city, a county that's populated most of the time, not always. A state or province that is uh, sometimes missing. Postal code and country. Uh, so that's the data set we're dealing with. It's, it's pretty much just information about every single uh, customer we've got. So let's build a data set. We're going to click the new data set button. And we're going to give this thing a name. It's going to be called customers. What does it track? It tracks customers. Um, we can upload a new file here. Uh, you can choose, you know, uh, a file from Spider Impact itself or a SFTP connection or Google Sheets. We're going to keep it simple and just drag in something from my desktop, that spreadsheet that we just looked at. And here's where you choose uh, the row that has the column labels. If you have extra information on top, like an a, a Excel file with a title or something up there, you could ignore rows. But you know, our first row is the, the, the uh, column labels. Here's where you apply transformations to data. You could say, you know, ignore records where the date is blank or something like that, right? You can combine fields together to make a date. Uh, we're gonna, it's optional, we're gonna skip the transformations. And then these are the fields it wants to create. Everything looks great. It, it picks uh, field names based on the column labels and it has data types automatically detected. We definitely want to set a primary key here. The customer ID is the primary key because there's one row for every customer and the ID uniquely identifies it. And that's what we're gonna use to link to the other data set as well. And so now the data set starts building. If you've got a lot of data, uh, this can take several minutes. Um, you know, in this example, it's going to take about 45 seconds. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay, our customer's data set is built. Um, we'll click over to the records tab. And yeah, this is the exact same data that was in the spreadsheet that we uploaded. Great. There's not a lot to explore here because this really is just details about every uh, customer, but you can do things like country, right? You can see, oh look, uh, half of our, our customers are in the US, quarter in the UK, 12% in Canada and Australia. Um, you could do, you know, state, right? Um, state or province. So you can say the United States, California, New Jersey, New York are the top states for sales um, in Australia. New South Wales, Queensland, right? So uh, there's a little bit of data exploration you can do, but there's, again, what we want to really tie is, is dollars to things, right? And there's no information about sales money at all in the customer's data set. So uh, what we can do is we can link the device sales to customers. So we'll click to device sales. No, I don't want to save that view. And we're going to go to customer ID in the device sales side, and we're going to say this isn't a text field. This is actually a link to a data set field, which one is it? Well, it's the customer's data set. And then I'm gonna click save, and this thing is going to build. Again, this is gonna take maybe a minute or so. And then we can choose uh, which fields we want to show from that linked data set. Uh, I'm going to choose from the customer's data set. Let's choose the country, right? And hit save. And so now when I go, I'm on device sales, right? I go to explore. 
I can choose go to my test view, which you know I'd say from before. Here's the sales employee. Let's break down by country now because we know each sale has a country. So we're going to repeat rows by country, linked from the customer's data set. Look at that. Uh, Delphine has these sales in Australia, Canada, UK, and US, and here's all the money for each, uh, you know, each uh, country. Well, data sets uh, have links that go both ways. You know, once you set up a link, it goes both ways. So here on the customer's data set, we're going to go to the Edit tab, and now it's linked, and we're going to bring in a field, the Sales Price field. And we're going to go back to the Explore tab. And so now for customers, we can go to uh, Country. And we can add a new column. And we can say, now we've got access to the sales price from device sales. And we want to do the total. We can see here that we made $15 million in sales to the United States, six to the UK, and three and three to Canada and Australia. So that shows how you can link data sets together and uh, present data on both sides of the linking equation. So the data set section is perfect for digging into your data and doing ad hoc analysis. But what happens when you want to visualize or share your data? Well, the good news is Spider Impact already has fantastic uh, functionality for that. So back to the app, uh, let's check out the chart section. Here's a sales date um, chart that we just put together that shows you know, all of our sales over time. Uh, here's sales by employee. So you can see uh, you know, broken down by employee, the left axis is the number of sales and the right axis is the sale value. You see here Russell and Kim are the people who have uh, very few sales, but their value is very high, right? Same kind of thing for report section. Um, you can run reports and create uh, any kind of report you want based on this, this data set data, but you can also group and do column formatting like I've done here, you know, made this one a little darker and this one a little lighter, you know, just to show you what we're talking about for reports. And these reports, you can, you know, have them automatically email every week to uh, whomever you choose. But where data sets really shines is dashboard. So this is a dashboard uh, showing the exact same data that we were talking about earlier, where, but instead of uh, tables stacked on top of each other, I've arranged these tables on a dashboard and I've changed their font size and, and you know, you can, you can um, have single values here. Uh, filters work exactly the same as before. So I just want to see United Kingdom data. I click on that. It says, yeah, there's uh, you know, $6.4 million of sales. Uh, there's 6,600 sales. And here's all of my sales folks' uh, sales for United Kingdom. Or if I just want to see you know, Holly's data, I can click on that and it shows her broken down by country here. So uh, dashboards, charts, reports, all that stuff uh, built into Spider Impact, perfect for visualizing and sharing your data. KPIs are the heart of Spider Impact, and with data sets, they're more powerful than ever. So here we're back in the software. We've got a country breakdown uh, with values for you know the four different countries. You can mouse over any of these values and see you know, the unabbreviated value, but if you click on a value, it brings up the Create Dataset KPI option. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to call this KPI Canada uh, Sales Dollars. We're going to use the sales date as the calendar field. You know, that's what changes every month to month. And we're going to put this KPI, I don't know, under Customer improve customer satisfaction, just, just a silly place. We'll just put it somewhere, right? It's Canada sales dollars. And what that does is it creates the KPI uh, directly in our scorecard tree. We can go edit it in the scorecard section by following the link. And right now, by default, it's unscored, but I can switch it to you know gold, red flag, and, and make it color up you know, based on performance goals. Uh, let's take a look at it, though, on the overview tab. This is data, real live data coming from the data set section populating this KPI. Um, you know. We've got a whole bunch of data in this data set. So, you know, let's look at it 49 periods earlier, right? And we can see, you know, the performance trend of Canada sales over time. That's our KPI. Um, it lives in the tree just with everything else. You're clicking around the um, scorecard tree and it's, it's a KPI. You know, in this example, it's unscored. Uh, but if 
you have any questions about what's going on, you can mouse over the KPI value and it says exactly where this data is coming from. Uh, in May of 2021, we had $72,000 worth of sales to Canada. Uh, and if you click on it, it drills into the data set so you can answer more questions. You know, here's May of 2021, it applies the filter, country is Canada, and you can ask questions about, you know, the sales employee. You know, right here, the Canada filter is locked in, right? Uh, and so with data sets powering KPIs, for the first time ever, you've got your full performance data uh, to support your KPIs behind the scenes. Finally, we're gonna cover data set permissions. Now, by default, data set permissions are the same as everything else in the software. They're by organization. So for example, just like if a scorecard or a dashboard exists in mobile world example, and I have permission to see that organization, I can see that per data set or the data inside of it, right? Uh, and that's, that's by default. So you know, here's sales employee, uh, sales department. This is in my test view. Well, I can go to the data set itself and go to this edit tab and I can see permissions, advanced permissions are off, and just like I said, everyone who can see this organization can see this data set. But if I flip on advanced permissions, only people who are explicitly given access to that data set can see that data set. And you can further give record level uh, permissions, and that's what I'm gonna show right here. So first of all, I'm going to give James Jones, James Jones now has view only access to this data set. And I can give him more information uh, by clicking his little edit link. And you know, I can give him administrator access. I can let him modify permissions, you know, all these different permissions for that data set. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a permission filter. We're gonna apply the filter to a field and it's going to be sales department. Let's say James is in charge of corporate sales. I want him to only see records for corporate sales. He's not in retail sales. He doesn't have access to see that kind of data. So we're applying a sales department is corporate sales. That's uh, a permissions filter to James Jones, right? And so I'm gonna save this data and those uh, permissions are applied to James Jones. Now let's jump over to the administrator section. Uh, here's James Jones, Jones as a user. I'm gonna log in as James just for the purposes of this demo. It's gonna say, yeah, everything I'm logged in is James. It's gonna be audited as me. It's all secure, right? All this stuff is tracked in the log. So I'm logging in as James. Well, James doesn't have it access to the administrative section, so it sends me back to the home page. That's fine. Let's go to data sets and let's go to uh, uh, sales by country or test view, right? Well, look at this. There is a sales department is corporate permissions filter that's permanently applied. And as James Jones, I can only see $11 million worth of sales and I can only see data where the sales employee is Kim Lavender and uh, or Russell Corrick. And I have the sales department corporate that's locked in, right? So this is the only data that I can view with that permissions filter. Let's jump over to the dashboard section. And here's the data set uh, dashboard that we showed earlier. These filters are applied. You're looking over here at the global uh, filter drawer. There's a permissions filter, sales department is corporate, that James can't remove, it's locked in. So again, he can still use these data uh, set dashboards. He can apply a filter, you know, United States, right? Uh, so he can still slice and dice, or he can see, you know, Russell's data, or he can see uh, Kim's data. All this stuff still works, it's just that he can only see act, uh, data for corporate. So we'll log out of James, and I'm back as myself, and I can see the full information. So that's the data set section in Spider Impact. As you can probably guess, there's a lot more than what I've shown you in this demo, but it should give you an overall feel for everything that's possible with this functionality.